Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. Today, everything is for sale. T. Masso at thewatchbox.com is your email concierge for asking questions about the price, availability, condition, and accessories of all these watches. And we're always looking to build inventory, buy, trade, or sell. Reach out to me, T. Masso at thewatchbox.com. We pay cash, we pay fast, no upper limit on value paid. We will buy your entire collection. And again, that's T. Masso at thewatchbox.com. Jumping straight in, here's a watch that has as well everything going for it. The Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean, 43.5 millimeters. This was a new size for the basic Planet Ocean as opposed to the GMT back in 2016. And it might be the sweet spot if you want to get all of the Planet Ocean features internally and externally. Now the timepiece fits well on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. You can see it's not excessively broad from lug to lug. While it is a thick timepiece, it's not nearly as thick as the Planet Ocean complications. You can see it's got a lot of presence. And in fact, the further you get from my arm, uh, the better it looks proportionally speaking. I've actually got a pretty big hand and a pretty big arm. My wrist is skinny, but my arm is large. And if you have a wrist like mine, you're going to find this actually fits pretty well. I think down to 15 centimeters circumference, you could actually wear this. It doesn't wear as large as it's near 44 millimeter size implies. Now it is very nicely made. As you could see, this watch features a 120 click bezel with a wonderfully sharp and tactile uh, knurling on the edge. Compared to the Diver 300 meter, the knurling here is a lot easier to grip, grab, and run. 120 clicks, ceramic bezel insert. Let's do the loom shot. You could see that on these Planet Oceans, as with all Omega Divers, the minute hand and the bezel pearl are a different color, so you can easily judge them against each other. Now, 600 meter diving depth. Helium escape valve on the flank, that's for saturation divers. And then we have a rather versatile clasp. You can see the bracelet's nicely made, removable links fixed by screws. Many individual links, so you have a lot of adjustability there. Now you also have a push button slider. And the push button slider is paired with a fold out dive extension. So you wind up with an awful lot of extensible length here. And you do have that push button for incremental sizing, whether the uh, the fold-out extension is deployed or not. Now, on the reverse side, caliber 8900. While it may look similar to the 8800 in the Diver 300 meter, this is a better movement in every regard. Two barrels instead of one for a better timekeeping uh, torque release from max wind to minimum wind. 60-hour power reserve rather than 55. And another difference between this and the 8800 is that you get the time zone function, so you can move that hour hand independently. You can see the dial is made of black ceramics or conium oxide. The symbol's right there. And all of the indices as well as the tri-arabic numerals and the logo applique real good looking watch stoutly built more wearable than deep sea and in my opinion just as capable unless you need that colossal diving depth the 1220 meters on the deep sea this is all you'll ever need even as a professional diver now jumping from one dive watch to another if i were to buy one of the two i would go a little bit higher up the tech tree and the pecking order on the food chain as as far as dive watches are concerned, this is pretty close to the top. The Blanc Pain 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe Gray Ceramic is finished, in my opinion, better than something like a Royal Oak Offshore Diver. They're not made all that far apart in the Valley du Jeu. You also get a lovely movement with three main spring barrels and a five-day power reserve anti-magnetic silicon hairspring, bevels that are a mile wide and gorgeous, and a lovely satination in a spiral pattern across the bridges. We have a triple finished rotor in white gold, 18 karat. You can see all the screw heads are black polished. We've got a free sprung balance, four hertz beat rate, lovely solarization on the ratchet wheel, for example. This is a beautiful watch inside and out. And the five day power reserve really does set it apart among dive watches. We'll do a quick loom shot, then a wrist shot. Taking a look, you can see the bathyscaphe glows brightly. Now it too has a 120 click bezel. This one's a little bit louder than the Omega. It's also a little bit chunky with more of a mechanical feel than the soft glide of the standard 50, 15, 50 fathoms. Of course, all in ceramic, just over 43 millimeters. Actually, if you measure the case, it's only 42. Ceramic and sapphire makes for a very light watch. So though it's big, it's not huge. 
and I have no problem whatsoever wearing it on my wrist because it is so light, it wears comfortably, and it's considerably thinner than the Planet Ocean. Don't let the sheer case size fool you. Uh, that sheer side is lower slung on the wrist than the Planet Ocean you just saw a moment before. The sailcloth strap is basically indestructible. These last for a decade or more, and because Blancpain is part of Swatch Group and they have incredible R&D resources, they were able to create ceramic that works on small components like pins and buckles without fracturing. Look at the faceting at the edge of the pin. They really sweat the details here. Oh, right. Now let's go all the way up to the top of the food chain in the sports watch world. A wonderful alternative to RM, arguably with more integrity about how it's made. This is the Grubel 4C Balancier Sport, and it is grade 5 titanium with a grade 5 titanium movement to match the case. So sapphire front, sapphire back, an 8-piece limited edition. You can see that the movement is finished the same as my short bridges would be at Grubel 4C, but they are made of titanium. So on the edge, you have a mirrored bevel, you have this polished channel around the edge, and then you have this lovely media blasted center. Jewel set in golden chiton, a nod to pocket watch, watchmaking. You can actually see the underpinning of the mechanism for the power reserve indicator. There's this lovely bridge for the motion works, and you can see it in action. And there's a free sprung balance that is absolutely enormous, beating away at 21,600 vibrations per hour. The watch does have a small sub-seconds. The balance is of their own design. It's free sprung adjusted in six positions with an overcoil hairspring. So the timekeeping on this watch really is quite good. It's 100 meters water resistant, and it has an integrated rubber strap, so it's gonna wear nicely, sit nicely, be very comfortable. And surprisingly, it's only 44.9 millimeter from bezel tip to bezel tip. So the distance across the wrist is about equal to a Datejust 36 on a bracelet, which is shocking considering the case is actually 45 millimeters wide in the oval direction down the wrist. Let's do a quick loom shot here. As you can see, you don't get a lot of loom when the loom is red, but it is a loomed watch. It is there. Jumping now to something that's a little bit more classical. We have the Royal Oak Jumbo, now long since discontinued. This is the pre-2012 version of the watch. This version of the watch was made from 2000 to 2011, 39 millimeters in stainless steel. You can see that this has the original monoblock case construction. There's no seam between the case back and the case flank. Everything loads through the fronts the way they used to be made before Audemars Piguet started chipping away at costs. Now, the watch also includes the pre-2012 dial. What's different well, the AP is up at 12 rather than 6. There are little Arabic numerals outboard of the indices. And, of course, we have a date disc that doesn't match the dials. There's a little bit of contrast there. But the hands are all white gold. Logo and indices, white gold. Blue base, very dark navy blue. Petite tapisserie, hobnail. It is the small hobnail cut on a pantograph. Pre-2012, Sternfrayer did this for AP. Post-2012, AP did it in house. Quality is the same. We have the little hexagonal bolts in white gold. And you can see white gold almost looks like yellow gold alongside the truly white shine of stainless steel. And of course, we have the crown to match. Another feature that we lost in the post-2011 versions of the Jumbo you can see that we've got this rotor on the case back that is entirely engraved and beautifully so. And it's got the A and the P logos internally. It has sharp outward points. It features mirrored bevels a mile wide. This is old school, a uh, very hand finished watch of outstanding quality. And if you look carefully, you can see that the, uh, the rotor itself is a work of art. Now this is my favorite part of the Jumbo. And the fact that it went away for a more machine finished rotor in 2012 left me cold. Now the movement's the same on both versions. Here we have the caliber 2121 JLC based. It's ultra thin with a date. It's 3.05 millimeters thick. Without the date, it's 2.4. It's a very thin movement that was designed for Patek, AP, and Vacheron and only ever used by them. Now by this point, when this watch was was made during the E-Series, the movement was being made in-house. You can also see that AP makes the movement and then finishes it beautifully. The bevels here are truly hand-finished, whereas if you buy the new 16202, the 7121 movement that comes in that is not finished to the same standard as this older caliber. So while this older caliber doesn't have the long power reserve or the quick set date, it does have beauty. And I think that is the reason you buy a watch like this. Now, throwing it on the wrist, it is very comfortable. It's reasonably compact. It's super 
are flat at 8.1 to 8.3 millimeters thick. They vary a little bit from year to year. And you can see across the wrist, it's a much better fit than the bigger 41 millimeter Royal Oaks. So if you're a traditionalist and you want the closest living relative to the original Royal Oak 5402, this is going to be that. And of course, it's got the older logo style single fold deployment clasp. Now, if you want the most sophisticated and feature dense watch in the integrated bracelet sports watch class step up to the vacheron constantin overseas this is the third generation watch 41 millimeters in steel this is the self-winding model there are several different dial variants there's a brown dial that i love there's a silver dial that's probably the most popular and then there is a black dial that came out a few years later i believe in 2018 but this blue dial is in many regards, the hottest one on the market right now. It's not necessarily the one that sold the most new. I think that's the silver dial, but this seems to be the one that pre-owned buyers seek out most often. Now you can see the dial is actually a sort of translucent lacquer on a black polished metal base. So it's not the metallic sunburst blue you see in online photos. This is actually a lot more like a certain chronomet made by a famous Geneva independent. Now you can also note that the hands, the logo, all white gold to resist tarnish and oxidation over time. The dial actually has great depth to it. Turn out the light, plenty of loom, no issue there. And the watch features a bracelet that is just packed with features. I always like to mention this. When you get one of the stainless steel overseas watches, you're gonna get the bracelet. Of course, it's got a quick release. You're also gonna get a blue rubber strap and a blue leather strap plus a clasp for them. So when you get this watch, you get the bracelet, you get two clasps, the one that's attached to the bracelet, the one that's attached to the straps, and you get two straps. Now, you also have a micro adjust built in. Here you can see on this side, the micro adjustment, which is 1.5 millimeters, has been extended. Over here, it's been collapsed. Now, you can see if I want to, I can just pull it right out and demonstrate how this slider works. You can see it's a very clean system. Pardon me, I know things look a little bit untoward under this camera, but I'm actually leaning out and holding this thing cantilevered. So that's how that works. It pops right out and it pushes back in, just like that. So you get 1.5 millimeters of adjustment on each side, so three total in two increments. Now taking a look at the rest of the bracelet, every single link is removable, which I like for sizing purposes. Pop the bracelet off. You can see that the movement here is entirely hand finished. It's Geneva Hallmark. Uh, it is what the original two generations of the overseas never were. So you have this 22 carat rotor. How much do you love that? In an era when AP is making its rotors cheaper, Vacheron gives you not one, not two, not three, but four different finishes on this compass rose rotor. And they use 22 carat gold, not 21, not 18, certainly not tungsten. Caliber 5100 properly sized to fit this case back. Two barrels, 60 hour power reserve, 25,000 ampere per meter anti-magnetic, and this watch is 150 meters water resistant, meaning it's actually more resistant to water than a standard Royal Oak Offshore. You have to go up to the Royal Oak Offshore Diver to get a more water resistant watch from a Holy Trinity brand. It is a great feeling timepiece on the wrist. It looks great. It feels great. It's relatively thin for this class. It's it seems everyone today is making an integrated bracelet sports watch, but no one is making them thinner. Vacheron holds the line, and this remains a pretty svelte watch, competitive with offerings from Patek, AP, and the many Arriviste upstarts in the space. All right, let's jump over to something that is a little bit familiar, a little bit different. We talked about Royal Oaks, and here we have a wonderful 125-piece limited edition from 2021, 41 millimeters, yellow gold, green... Grand Tapisserie dial. It is the large hobnail. It's bigger than the petite, and you can see the difference right here. So you get a lovely look. You get a full yellow gold bracelet, and you can see this one is absolutely razor sharp. No marks of wear. There are some fingerprints. I apologize for that, but there, there are no marks of wear no refinishing ever, an absolutely gorgeous looking watch with a Frédéric Piguet 1185 inside doing business as AP Caliber. 
385 or 2385. Uh, it is a lovely thin watch. It is swimmable with a 50 meter water resistance and a screw down crown. It's got plenty of luminescence, but the feel of weight on the wrist is really what impresses you with this watch. It feels as though it must be 44, 45, 46 millimeters. No, it's a 41. It's just the solidity of the bracelet and the case is surpassing. And of course, the bracelet by itself, nine to 11 hours to finish by hand. That's before we even get to the dial and before we even get to the bezel. Now you can see it's a well-loomed watch. Again, we have white gold bolts in the bezel, uh, but you'll note that compared to yellow gold, they look white, whereas compared to steel, they look yellow. That's the nature of white gold, sort of in between those two worlds. Now taking a quick look at the clasp mechanism. You can see the difference between that jumbo we had before and this. This is a much more robust, more sporting clasp of sufficient size and gauge that could be used on an offshore. A very, very impressive watch in its construction. Though, of course, with a Frédéric Piguet inside the case, AP does not give you a display case back, but the flip side of that is it makes the watch thinner. Now let's talk about a sports watch with a bracelet that most of us can actually afford. Zenith Defile Primero 21. Of course, as you could see, we have a remarkable Foudrillon chronograph system. One one hundredth of a second. We have two different power reserves. One is automatic winding and it powers the time device. It tells you the time. That's a 50 hour El Primero movement. We also have a 50 minute manual wind caliber that runs the chronograph. So you can see we have a balance wheel for the time. That has a silicon escapement for long durability in between services. And the hyperactive 360,000 vibration per hour secondary escapement. That has conventional lever with pallet stones, uh, but it operates at a much higher rate. And that allows this chronograph to resolve one one hundredth of a second. So you can see right there, it's super easy to resolve those hundredths because the hand makes one circuit of the dial every second. So for example, right there, you're looking at just over two tenths of a second. Now the watch is loomed. There is loom. We'll take a look at that. It's also 100 meters water resistant, and you actually do have hacking seconds, which is a feature not traditionally included on El Primero movements. So you can see I've stopped the El Primero side, but both sides of this watch can operate independently. You can run the stopwatch without running the time, and you can have the time running and keeping track of the time of day without any energy in the chronograph. Now, of course, the watch does lose its more voluminous chronograph registers. As you can see, there are no hours on this dial, but you get a lot. Now, the watch also has chronometer certification, which is impressive. The 44 millimeter case is grade five titanium. As you can see on the reverse side, the watch can automatically wind the time telling functions, but you must manually wind the chronograph uh, because it does have a relatively short power reserve and it requires a lot of torque to energize. And then there is a power reserve for the 50 minute reserve to mosh up at the top of the dial. Now, the watch does look a little bit like an Hublot or a Tag Heuer, but it should be noted that this particular case shape was drawn from historic Zenith DeFi watches from the late 60s through the 70s. So while the look definitely appears modern and possibly even related to its brethren in the LVMH watch empire, this is very much Zenith's own case shape, and DeFi is very much their own model line name. Also worth mentioning, it's very light on the wrist. Although it's a 44, it doesn't wear that way, just over 50 millimeters from lug to lug. By the way, that tech, that 360,000 vibration per hour chronograph mechanism, uh, that actually comes from the Tag Heuer side of the family. Now, right here, we have a limited edition from 2006. This is the Chronomatic 24-hour. Now, this is based on the vintage reference 1809, which was the cosmonaut version of the big Navitimer. Traditionally, cosmonaut was the name for the 24-hour dials. Uh, we saw them on the reference 809, which was inspired by Scott Carpenter. That was a 24-hour dial chronograph for aviators and astronauts. So the big Navitimers arrived in the late 1960s. And just as we got big Navitimers, we got big cosmonauts. Around that era, the chronomatic caliber, which was co-developed with, among others, Buren and Hoyer and Hamilton. That, that's the famous uh, Dubois, de Praz and Buren combo that became, by some standards, the first 
automatic chronograph on the market. Well, that caliber, which would be known as caliber 11, caliber 12, and so on in Hoyer speak, uh, was known as chronomatic at Breitling. And so this watch, which is powered by an ETA 2892 base with a chronograph module, uh, this is an homage to that era of Breitling Navitimer, the big Navitimer, the big Cosmonaut, and the earliest automatic chronograph movements used in them. Now, the watch does include a flyback complication, which is uh, unique to this model. The caliber 22 that you have inside this watch is automatic winding. It is a chronometer. It has a 24-hour dial, which means that the hour hand makes one circuit of the dial every 24 hours. And then we have a flyback chronograph. We also have a crown on the left side, a nod to the original chronomatic calibers. And we'll do a quick wrist shot. The watch is immense. It's approximately 49 millimeters in diameter. And you can see just from the construction of the bracelet that it is a modern timepiece and not a vintage watch. But it does look passably like the original. It's not until you get to the bracelet, which is clearly of modern construction and a higher quality than vintage, it's only once you get to the bracelet that you realize this is not a vintage watch. Now on the wrist, it looks great. It wears surprisingly well for something so large. You can actually see it's not overlapping the edge of my wrist. So yeah, you can wear this watch on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist. And on the reverse side, you can see that it's a pilot's watch, 30 meters water resistant. So you know, don't take it swimming. But this is a lovely piece, 2006, 1,000 piece limited edition. It does have the circular slide rule flight calculator bezel. And actually, the interesting thing is this particular version on the big Navitimers and the big Cosmonauts is actually geared so that the bezel and the interface move at different speeds. Go ahead. Take a look at this little knurling notch underneath my finger. Now watch as I move the bezel. You can see the number 50 overtakes and then passes that knurling notch. That differential action is achieved by the mechanism underneath this cover. A lot of people think this is a helium valve. No, it's not. We also have a captive bezel construction. You can see the bezel is held on by screws. This is a very robust system of construction that Breitling typically uses on its dive watches, making it impossible to accidentally knock the bezel off the case a really cool watch in every regard, and one that is anything but a common Navitimer. Got a whole bunch of uncommon watches coming up here. We have the Time Pyramid Black Edition from Arnold & Son of Le Chau de Fonds. Arnold & Son, which is the name brand of the manufacturer La Joupere, creates watches that are beautifully made and rare. They only build about 700 examples per year. This is the Time Pyramid Black Edition a 50-piece limited edition in DLC steel for 2018. The watch includes two barrels, two power reserve indicators, one regulator, and you can see the two barrels and the drivetrains are stacked like a pyramid. They are flanked by power reserve indicators that move in opposite directions as the watch discharges. It's manual wind with a 90-hour power reserve. The movement is entirely proprietary. You can see that there is a double solarization on the ratchet wheels of the barrels. It's really nicely made. And though it is on paper 44.6 millimeters in diameter, it doesn't feel anywhere near that size. On the wrist, you can see it's super slim. It really is quite low. And it is a dress watch in spite of its imposing presence. It is big, blacked out, and a little bit sinister. But it is also flat and easy to wear underneath the cuff. And it's fairly light on the wrist. Arnold & Son finishes watches beautifully. So if you want something that's finished, frankly, to a standard a little bit better than your run-of-the-mill Audemars Piguet, you want something like this. And it's going to give you a lot of pleasing details within and without a 50-piece limited edition. I love the contrast between silver and gold and black. Well done, Arnold and Son. Though sometimes black on black and nothing else will do. This is the model 1800S Damazener from Zinn. Now, Zinn is not known for making watches like this because this is a quasi-dress watch. Though 43 millimeters in diameter, it's only 10.6 millimeters thick, it has a sort of simulated Damascus steel. So the steel is created and the case lugs bezel and dial are all one piece of metal, which is why the grain continues from one surface to another. Chemical etching is used to create this Damascus-like form, all these different grains and waves and channels. And then it goes through Zinn's tegament process, where carbon diffusion makes the steel effectively as hard as ceramic, so about 1,500 Vickers. They then use a hard black coating on top of the tegment, and this is well over 2,000 Vickers. So you have a watch that is almost scratch-proof. It is automatic winding with a 2892 inside, so 42 hours of power reserve, stop seconds, quick set date, and it is a 100-piece limited edition. So you can see this watch is 
remarkably striking for a dress model, and it is a dress model, though with loom automatic winding, an almost indestructible case, and a 100 meter water resistance, you can absolutely put it on a water resistant strap and wear it as a sports watch, though that's not really the intention. I don't know what to call this next watch. I don't know if it's a dress watch. I don't know if it's a sports watch, but it's cool. Now, this is a model originally launched in 2017 by HYT. HYT was down and out for about a year, but they're back now. And along with their sister company, Pressiflex, they're making new watches, servicing and providing parts for the old one. Now, the watch is a great looking piece. As you can see, the H0 did away with the problem that was endemic to all HYT watches since 2011, which is that they were just too big to wear. Well, we still have a 48.8 millimeter case, but that's also the lug to lug dimension because it is a lugless round watch. Now, you might be surprised to know that this watch is actually quite well loomed. And it may not be intuitive, but it's easier to read this watch in many regards than a conventional timepiece. You can see uh, down at lower right, the meniscus represents the current hour. And then we've got our seconds and our minutes up at the top. It is a regulator in addition to being a retrograde. So right now you're looking at five o'clock. And when the meniscus, there are two immiscible liquids, one clear, one red. They're inside a little borosilicate tube. When this reaches the end of its travel, you can see that little meniscus is heading towards six. What happens is that the watch goes into retrograde mode. So it is both a regulator and a retrograde. And that fluid meniscus really jumps faster than you would expect. It moves quite quickly. And then it'll restart six, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And it reads just like so. There are two different bellows. They're driven mechanically by a cam. They contain each liquid. Again, they're immiscible, so they can never mix. So that meniscus always gives you the time. There's a power reserve indicator. As you as you wind the watch, it changes from white to red. It has a 65-hour power reserve. And the movement was created by Chronode, which is a high horology movement engineering house for HYT. So you can appreciate that it's nicely made, and it has a large open, airy architecture. It is a traditional Swiss lever that beats away at 8 beats per second. And then there is a cam system that's driven by the drivetrain, and that's how the fluid moves. A really cool watch with a super smart micro-adjust inside its clasp. If you look right here, there's a push button and then inside the clasp th there's a slider that you can use for fine-tuning the fit on the wrist. We've got a lovely factory strap that is super thick and durable. It's got a lovely golf ball imprint on it. The case is mostly sapphire. You can see there is probably about a two to one ratio of sapphire to steel in the surface area around the side and so the watch actually wears almost indestructible. Sapphire is 1800 Vickers and so when I wear this watch on my wrist most of what's going to come in contact contact with an obstacle is sapphire. And really, sapphire is almost indestructible. If you're not super clumsy, constantly shattering sapphires on the luxury watches you already have, chances are you will never put a mark of any kind on this watch. And it's a fun way to tell time, and it's a great way to initiate non-watch people, because it can be difficult to describe overcoil hairsprings or Geneva Hallmark or even the function of a tourbillon, but this thing is a circus. And I like a circus. Now, we're going to start with something that is very special and surprisingly accessible. 37 millimeters in yellow gold. Here we have the Langa Saxonia. Now, this is the Saxomat, the Saxomat caliber 921 in its original form, a glorious looking movement. As you can see, the Langamatic series includes this three quarter rotor, and then we have a platinum mass on a 21 karat rotor. So you actually have a precious metal, multiply finished rotor, blued screws, fixing that to a platinum mass. It's a double precious metal rotor. We also have black polish on the cap at center, black polish atop the ratchet wheel, black polish atop the escape wheel cap, and black polish atop the swan's neck regulator. Now, a fun feature of the Saxomat caliber is that it does not just hack, it zero resets. So when you zero reset, that makes it easier to set the watch against, say, a reference time clock, like an atomic clock online. Now, while the watch is made of yellow gold, the dial's actually made of sterling silver. So you have a silver dial inside a gold case. You get both of them. The bridges and the plates are golden hued. That's nickel, copper, and zinc. And it is the copper that gives them the golden hue. We actually have mirrored on glass. You can see it. There aren't a whole lot of bridges here, but what's there is beautifully finished on its edge. We have glassuta stripes across the bridges, and we have engine turning on the base plate. You can also see that the balance cock, as with all bridges and balance cocks on longer watches, freehand engraved. And then we have both black polished 
and blued screws fired in the kiln. The watch includes both. It's an easy watch to wear. It sits easily on the wrist. It's a unisex option. It's for him, it's for her, and you can see it really is super flat. No issues with dress cuffs. Very comfortable, sits lightly, and it's the kind of thing where at the end of the day, if you're looking for the perfect watch for formal attire, look no further. You might be able to find something that matches, but none that surpasses this lovely Longomatic Saxonia. Okay, this is a beast. Normally this would be the last watch. I always like to keep the last watch in check as the best watch of the episode, but you know it's really something when a Dottograph Perpetual Torbion is the second best watch in the episode. So we'll wind this up. You can see there's a lot going on here on the dial. We've got a flyback chronograph. The watch is 41.5 millimeters in platinum. It's a 100-piece limited edition. It came out in 2016. There's a power reserve indicator over at 10 o'clock. It turns from red to silver white as you wind the watch. Uh, we also have a solid white gold moon phase disc. We have a perpetual calendar, we have a double digit date, and you can actually step the calendar so the day, the date, the month, the leap year, the moon phase, everything moves in sync. If you fall five days behind, the watch stops, rewind the watch, set the time, and then index it one, two, three, four, five times. Everything will step forward so you don't have to waste your time with lots of little independent pusher tools. Now, the watch is loomed, which is a bit surprising for a dress watch, but it shouldn't be too surprising as we also have a tachymeter scale on board, and the tachymeter scale allows you to reach the the speed of, say, a, a race car around a track. So you've got a chronograph with a flyback and a tachymeter and loom, and you've got a black dial in a platinum case, so this is by no means a formal watch. It could work as a dress watch. It is intended to work as a dress watch, but it's not frumpy. That's what I mean to say. You don't have to put on a tuxedo to feel comfortable in this watch. Wear it casual. Now, taking a quick look at the case back, you can see it is a monster machine. The movement has a tourbillon, which, oh, by the way, includes hacking seconds. And the tourbillon includes a diamond capstone on its underside. So the underside of the tourbillon bridge features a true diamond. The, the rubies in here are synthetic, but the diamond is real. You can also see that the bridge, the half bridge, or balance cock for the tourbillon, the tourbillon cock, it is entirely black polished, and it has sharp interior bevels. There are two sharp interior bevels inside. We have both black polished and blued screws. We have that freehand engraving. We have a combination of German silver, which is the golden-hued material, and and then we have silver, which is steel. All the steel components of the chronograph are satinated on their top and then beveled on their sides. So the mirrored anglage is present on both steel and German silver components. You can also see that we have a column wheel with a lateral clutch. Note that the lateral clutch is fully jeweled. We have an instantaneous minute jumper. And then we also have a set of sharp exterior and interior angles rendered in steel inside of the clutch mechanism. You can see the clutch moving out and in, out and in. It's made of steel, it's fully finished, and it even has a golden chaton held by screws fixing its pivot, the driving wheel. You can see there are several chaton fixing pivots. That's a nod to the pocket watch making era in Glasuta. When jewels would not be directly pressed into bridges and plates, they would be placed in precision chaton, and the chaton would be placed into the bridges using screws. Not necessary today, but it is beautiful, and that is the idea here. Now, the watch includes a full deployment clasp, which is a bit of a rarity on longer watches, as they typically have only pin buckles, even on flagship complications. So this watch goes over and above. It's a datograph, flyback chronograph, it is a perpetual calendar, it is a moon phase, it is a tourbillon, it is all of these things with an overcoil, five position adjustment and a free sprung balance architecture very special but in terms of specialness this is next level this is the triple split technically part of the saxonia family this is the sequel to the 2004 double split now originally the double split allowed you to split two intervals of up to 30 minutes, because unlike a traditional split-second chronograph, which can split intervals up to 60 seconds, the double split featured two minutes hands, as well as two seconds hands, allowing you to record two separate intervals of up to 12 hours length, or six, 30 minutes length, I should say. I'm getting ahead of myself, because this watch has two hour hands. You can see them stacked and coaxial up at 12 o'clock, so now you can split two events of up to 12 hours length. The dial, again, made of sterling silver, but blue galvanized. We have a power reserve indicator. Well, 
catch that back up. We have a power reserve indicator. Uh, the watch has a 55-hour power reserve. You'll also appreciate that the watch is a flyback chronograph. You can split the seconds, but you can also reset and restart. Now, the watch has a tachymeter scale, once again, for gauging speed. It has lovely rose gold hands, rose gold indices, and once more, a surprising amount of loom for what it is. Now, it's 43.2 millimeters in diameter, and the great thing is, though it's thick, it's no thicker than the double split. While Longa claims there's only a small difference between them, I found they're actually exactly the same at about 16 millimeters thick, which is impressive because this is a much more complicated watch. Now, not only do you get a deployant clasp, you get Longa's best deployant clasp. You saw on the Dotograph Perpetual Tourbillon that there was a folding clasp. Well, here we have a folding clasp with twin trigger release, so it can only open if you press the triggers. Why? Because this watch is heavy and valuable. And then there is a system internally that will clamp the strap. So it will come down and clamp the strap in place so it cannot accidentally pull out, slide out, and drop when you're putting the watch on or taking it off. And you can see the use of ceramic pin snaps inside this little clasping system so that it will retain its tight tolerances over time. It is a very impressive system. Now, the watch is large, but it's not huge. And you will see on my wrist, if I were so inclined, I could pull it off. It's a technical tour de force. 100 pieces were made in this 2021 edition in rose gold, and 100 pieces were made back in 2018 in white gold, which means there are only 200 of these in the world. Some people like the frigid look of the white gold. Some people like the warmth of the rose gold with the blue dial. It is entirely down to preference. We currently have one of each, so we give you the same choice. Remember, reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.